Now, British Airways has warned that it could make up to 12,000 staff redundant because of the collapse in air travel caused by the pandemic. Its parent company predicts that it'll be several years until demand returns to the level seen last year. Our transport correspondent Tom Burridge has the latest. Parked up for weeks, but no one knows when they'll be flying again. Tonight, British Airways' parent company announced plans to lay off up to 12,000 staff. That's more than a quarter of its entire workforce. In a letter to staff, BA's boss said it was unclear when countries will reopen borders, so the airline had to be reimagined and reshaped. He said substantial change was required to get through the pandemic and withstand longer term reductions in customer demand. The pilots and staff that work for British Airways are, are shocked. Uh, I've been in touch with some of them this evening. Uh, it's a real bolt out of the blue. Now begins a tricky negotiation with the unions. British Airways didn't ask for any government bailouts. They told their workforce um, that they would survive quite comfortably. And lo and behold, they turned around and announced 12,000 um, job losses. Now they've got to come up with some very, very good reasons for that. I'm not convinced about uh, any of those reasons yet. Um, I suspect there's a bit of opportunism going on here by British Airways. BA's transatlantic rival, Virgin Atlantic, is in a much worse financial position. It has applied for a bailout from the government. First, it needs to attract new investors. It's a hugely competitive industry and it's populated by a lot of low-cost carriers which operate on the thinnest margins. And we could possibly be seeing an end to cheap air travel anyway. Paying to park and maintain them is costly. Some aircraft are leased for huge sums. So airlines are hemorrhaging cash. More job losses elsewhere are almost inevitable. Tom Burridge, BBC News. Now, the government scientific advisers have confirmed again, in the clearest terms, that some social distancing measures will be in force until the end of the year and quite possibly into next year. Among the businesses most likely to be affected in the longer term uh, is the hospitality sector, with pubs and restaurants already very badly hit. Our business editor, Simon Jack, has the story. The closing bell. It's five weeks since the coronavirus rang time on the hospitality industry and the government says venues big and small across the UK could be among the last to leave the lockdown. Social distancing of two metres will be here for months and venues like Pippa Cole's Cafe in Chester are barely two metres wide in places. We're such a small uh, cafe, um, even if we did take tables out um, and try to reconfigure the layout, um, it would be extremely difficult to keep the social distancing required. Um, we have to think about our customers as well as our staff. Remember this? Seems like a long time ago. Fullers operate 400 pubs and restaurants, and the boss says even in bigger venues, social distancing will make life difficult and, frankly, miserable. You think of the practical problems of going to the loo, being served at the bar, being served a plate of food at your table, and then you align that with the fact that we go to a pub to socially interact with friends. It simply wouldn't be the same having a two metre gap. It would be a very soulless experience. I mean, would that be financially viable? It would mean that our revenue would be down as much as 80%, but our costs would go up. So it's actually potentially more catastrophic for the sector to operate under social distancing guidelines than it is with us being closed down at the moment. Fullers has 5,000 workers whose wages the government is paying under the Job Retention Scheme, or JRS. That's until the end of June. Then what? We visited this East London venue the day the Job Retention Scheme was announced. It's worked up till now, but there are grave warnings about the very near future. At the start of all this, we had 100 employees. We put 90 onto furlough. If the Job Retention Scheme is not extended beyond the end of June, I doubt very much we'll have more than seven employees still working in the business. It's that serious for us. I think that more than half of hospitality businesses and perhaps as many as two million jobs are at risk. This is not just about missing a night out. It's about large parts of an industry going missing. But the wages tab to June could hit £50 billion and the government knows it can't pay it forever.
Simon Jack, BBC News.